The Reagan Library is anything like its counterparts. Most of those who enter these doors will not be academics. No, they'll be ordinary people of all ages, backgrounds, and political persuasions, eager to examine their past and explore a history not always learned in school. For them, this institution will be a time capsule of American growth and greatness, covering more than a single presidency, honoring more than a single president. Here, visitors will have a chance to tour and study at their leisure, the accelerating changes in a fast forward world. They will be able to trace the historic process by which mankind has stepped back from the narrow window ledge of mutually assured destruction. They will observe an American president and a Soviet leader sitting in a boathouse on the shore of Lake Geneva, striving to banish the nuclear nightmare from the dreams of all our children. They will see tears of pride from the boys of Puente du Hoc. They will hear the trusting engines of Challenger lifting off on a heartbreaking final mission. They will be introduced to a warm and selfless First Lady who reached out to a generation of young Americans threatened by the scourge of drugs and who put a comforting arm around an older generation through the Foster Grandparents Program. They'll catch the sinister crackle of a would-be assassin's weapon, one that forever changed the lives of Jim and Sarah Brady, while reconfirming my belief that whatever time remained to me was to be spent in service to the American people and in accord with the Lord's wishes. No doubt many visitors will stand in the replica of my Oval Office. Perhaps they will sense a little of the loneliness that comes with decision-making on a global scale, or the stabbing pain inflicted by a terrorist bomb half a world away, or the dread sound of a telephone in the middle of the night with news of hostile actions. They will also feel some of the immense pride that comes to any president in that office as he comes into daily contact with the American heroes whose faith in themselves, their mission, and their mandate is a never-ending source of emotional renewal. And let me offer lesson number one about America. All great change in America begins at the dinner table. So tomorrow night in the kitchen, I hope the talking begins. And children, if your parents haven't been teaching you what it means to be an American, let them know and nail them on it. That would be a very American thing to do. All in all, not bad. Not bad at all. And so, goodbye, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.